everybody, I'm here with Cassandra Clare, author of the Shadowhunter series, as well as Sarah Reese Brand, who helped co-write the Bane Chronicles and Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy with Cassie. And we're gonna talk a bit about Lady Midnight. <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. Of it is such an honor. Uh, I have some different questions, a few questions about this new book. It's amazing, and congratulations on being the number one book. I just Yay. saw the announcement. It's so awesome. Very exciting. What was it about the poem Annabelle Lee that inspired you to incorporate it into Lady Midnight? I think it was the theme in the in Annabelle Lee of like a first love that's so you know overwhelming that you never get over it, and also um, the idea of like a love that exists past death. That's awesome. So having lived in LA, I know it must have helped in choosing the settings for Lady Midnight. What made you choose those specific places for the book? I think because they are the places in Los Angeles that I'm the most familiar with. I mean, LA is a big, sprawling city with yeah. a lot of different parts, and um, it's hard to like pick exactly what. But for instance, like when I was trying to decide where the institute was, I went all over the city, and I was like, well, it could be here, it could be here, it could be downtown, <laughs> it could be in Santa Monica, it could be here, it could be there. There's no like real center of the city. And then I thought, well, I should pick the place that I'm most attached to because I've been writing about it a lot. What do I love the most? I love this area of Los Angeles up um, by the beach. Yeah. Um, the, that's sort of north of the city where things are still kind of wild and the desert you know, meets the ocean and it's still full of animals and um, wildflowers and whatnot. And I just thought this would be a great place you know, for the Institute and I'll never get tired of describing it. That's awesome. LA is a wonderful city. When I go back one day, I definitely want to go check out some of those locations. It's yeah, a lot awesome. of them really exist. Like uh, the Camp Counter's Deli, where they go with Marquez yeah. strawberries or whatever, is a real place. And I made Sarah and Holly and all of my <laughs> friends go there with me because I just wanted to make sure it was still exact. I remembered it when I was a teenager. And yeah, they hadn't even changed the wallpaper. I had strawberries. Yeah. <laughs> that might have given me the idea. I can't even remember. So, The Wild Hunt is something new to the series. Can you tell us a little more about it? Because that really excited me. I've always been fascinated by the the myth of the Wild Hunt, and it's always like um, sort of circled the series. Like there's a scene in in City of Lost Souls where Jace and Clary are in Italy, and Jace tells her to like lie down, and they look up at the sky and they see the Wild Hunt go by. Yeah. And there's also um, a brief mention in Infernal Devices where they're talking about Cater Idris, and they say the legend is that's where the Wild Hunt sleeps. So I've mentioned <laughs> them before, but I've never gotten to really write about them, and I think um, it's because they're part of fairy mythology, but there's this sinister, dark, and sort of and wild like element to them. There, yeah. there's different variations of the myth. Um, they're always led by Gwyn, who has different names, different cultures, and they're always. Um, it's always that they, you know, they ride at night. They ride across the sky, and sometimes they're unquiet ghosts. Sometimes they're people who've been exiled. Sometimes they're under a curse. So I just love this idea of this like group of sort of like outcasts who have this incredibly like cold and wild and unfriendly job of sort of riding through the night, you know, having no home, sleeping nowhere, being part of no court or culture, and, um, you know, sort of following battles of the dead. And I thought, of all the places for Mark to wind up after he's kidnapped by the fairy, this would be the worst. <laughs> Is there anything about Mark's experience in fairy that we don't really know that wasn't really touched on in Lady Midnight? I mean, I think, yes, yeah, so there's a little bit more of that in Lord of Shadows oh, because nice. they actually go to Fairy. Okay, so we return. And um, <laughs> I think that um, Mark mostly spent his time at the Wild Hunt. The few times that his paths crossed with life uh, that's actually Fairy um, yeah. was at like Rebels or Dancing Nights, so the only times that they met up. And so um, he actually does know a little bit more about Fairy and, and some people there than I have. So this is a big question I have to ask. In Lady Midnight, the consequences of loving one's parapetai romantically is revealed. I, I, the feels were overwhelming when I when I read this. Has this happened to many pairs of parapetai in the past? And would we be familiar with any of those pairs? I don't think we would be familiar with any of those pairs because I deliberately kept the <laughs> the consequences of oh. secret. <laughs> I didn't want people to know about it until they found out about it here because I thought that people would feel like oh. It's kind of, you know, like Will's curse, like it might turn out not to be true, or it might turn out not to be that bad. And I wanted, the, you know, to the actual revelation for people to be like it was for Emma, that it's crushingly bad, yeah. right? And like actually horrible. Um, so that they would have the same kind of reaction, which is hopefully shock and horror. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are, we've known Parabatai in the past who've fallen in love. There was, um, they were in the Barbara and Silas. 
<laughs> Barbara and Silas, yes. They're in the Bane Chronicles, yeah. and they're also mentioned like in Journal device, Devices, which is very good at remembering names, uh, who are like Gideon's like aunt and... and uh, I'm gonna have sorry. to do a reread. I'm, I'm just, definitely gonna have to do a reread. I'm just They fell in love and, then, <laughs> and they killed themselves. Yeah. So we know that it, that's been bad for us. Like, it's all over. <laughs> so I don't know, like, we don't know. I don't think we know really, like, if it started to go bad for them, you know? Yeah. If they started to go crazy and all that or stuff. They're just like, oh, or if they just were. The law is harsh, but the clay yeah. are assholes. It's just kind of terrible. <laughs> right. Very so bad. I know a lot of us are interested in learning more about Malcolm and Annabelle's past. Do you plan on releasing any short stories or flashbacks later in the Dark Artifices series of a young Malcolm and Annabelle? The Malcolm and Annabelle. And do you plan on helping I uh, <laughs> love when y'all work together. I'm getting the right uh, <laughs> Tomb by the Sounding Sea sex scene. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ooh, why does the sea sound like that? <laughs> I'm so sorry, I girl in Poe. And now he would be horrified if he knew. Um, uh, we do find out a lot more about Malcolm and Annabelle's past in Lord of Shadows. Yes. Um, and of course, Annabelle is. A little bit of the last hours. Sort of back. Uh, but yeah, there's also in the last hours, you know, Malcolm is, is a good character. I mean, no, which I think is kind of going to be is, is interesting so far writing him as someone who isn't this bad guy. I just hope yeah. Magnus never becomes the villain. I, 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 I don't think that's going to happen <laughs> to Magnus. It's a really, I don't think it's, because the thing is, I don't think it's losing the person that he loved. It's the betrayal. Mm, yeah. You know, it's all the being lied to. Plus, Magnus is a dad now. So he has to be responsible. He has to be responsible for Max. Like Blueberry would just be like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so go crazy and kill anybody. I have a few more. In the sequel to Lady Midnight, can you tell us if there will be a small time jump or will it pick up right where the first book left off? It picks up about a week later. Okay, cool. And now I just have a couple of fun questions and you can chip in as well. Sure. Uh, if either of you got stuck on a deserted island with any character from the expanded Shadow Winter series, for your best chances of survival, who would it be and why? Oh, Magnus. I'm Maxie's Magnus. <laughs> you got oh! Maxie Magnus! You <laughs> like a portal! I want Magnus! I want, everyone wants Magnus! <laughs> First, I'll spend a week on this island with Magnus. We'll drink drinks out of coconuts, we'll talk about our lives. Then he portals us out of there. Yeah. yeah! Otherwise, I just have to pick another warlock. Not What's wrong with Katarina? She's very nice! Oh, she's cranky! <laughs> Ragnar? I mean, I love Ragnar! He lives! Oh, Ragnar lives! Oh, man! <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be hard watching. I it think on the show. Uh, Ragnar. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we know what happens. You know, yeah. You gotta, you gotta be braced for that. So, what character from your books do you identify with the most? I think I identify with Simon the most, just because I feel like, you know, he from the beginning he was the sort of he was the mundane who was thrust into this world, and he didn't have any way to deal with it. I feel like if it was me, I I would also be instantly killed. <laughs> but I think Sarah identifies with um. Oh, I want Tessa, I'm guessing, yeah. Tall, Tessa. Burnett, makes all of her decisions based on literature. I did make her tall because Sarah's tall, and Sarah was always complaining about all of the pitfalls of being tall, and so I made Tessa tall. I, I do identify with Tessa Plus, I'm constantly involved in love triangles. Yeah, I mean, Team Joessa. That's, 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 oh, yeah. Team Joessa. Her and Grace here. Yes. <laughs> um, so, one more question. On a side note, many people are loving the show Shadowhunters, including myself, because I do recap reviews for the show as well. If you could see one character from Lady Midnight on the show, who would it be? Because we do have a season two coming. We do yeah, have a season exciting. two coming. Um, let me think. Ooh, uh, I think it would be fun if they did a similar thing to, I mean, to in the books, in the sense of introducing Jillian and Emma as younger characters. Like, I'd like to see the kid version of them as well. But but like, I would also, oh, sorry. Both of you. No, I was going to say, I would love to see Malcolm do a walk on. You know, he's yes. another warlock. I'd like to see him interact with Magnus. We know they're friends. Be kind of, I think actually that would probably work better. I think it would be interesting because we would, those who know the Dark Artifices would know who he was, and those who don't know it would just be like, hey, cool, another warlock. What we'd be kind of see their dynamic as friends before all this stuff happens. My vote would be for Anselm. I think it would be hilarious <laughs> if he came over to like help with the vampire stuff. And I was like, can't wait to, oh no, no, I felt no, so no. bad for him at the end. I know, the thing that Julian did for him to him was way, way hard. I don't know Hunter's I think for me, I would pick, uh, Mark or Christina? I don't know. I, don't I just want to cuddle Mark and like protect him from the world. I, I, he was my favorite character in the book, and honestly, oh, I, I him. just loved him, and I felt just something about him. I, every scene with him, he 
just had well, he's still trying to figure out who he is. You know, he's like, am I a shadow hunter? Am I a fairy? Yeah. Like, I, you know, don't belong in this world, but don't belong in that other world. So the heterochromatic or tragic. Music. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, Sarah's got different colored eyes, and she's like, what? all the fairies are face tummy. I am so thankful to have both Cassie and Sarah to talk to and talk about this amazing book. Cassie just came out with Lady Midnight and it is number one on New York Times bestseller list. And Sarah just came out with a new book as well. Do you want to tell the wind and fire? <laughs> yes. Tell the wind and fire is out on April 6th and it is a retelling of a tale of two cities with magic. I believe all Cassie fans are more acquainted with the tale of two cities than most. That's true. That's true, given in for all devices. So yes, another retelling is always welcome. No one gets their head chopped off in my version, but maybe something will happen. Yeah. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this. Go pick up Lady Midnight and Sarah's book as well, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye, guys. Bye.